All right, so Robert, I don't see you. Um, um, I could I could try to do that. No, 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 don't worry about it. We don't. I mean, if you can, but all, sometimes it causes problems. So sometimes Robert, and, and, and along with Ron Leonard, are our two major experts on uh, renewables, uh, and especially in California. And Robert, I asked you for some statistics, and you gave <laughs> me some which completely blew my mind. Oh, I see we have Jennifer Tanner on the line. Jennifer, it's great to have you with us. Thank you so much. And Jennifer does a lot of great um, uh, energy work as well. So chime in, Jennifer, when you, when you like. So Robert, we discussed, so I asked you a simple question, which is how much power in California is generated with rooftop solar? Because we always get these vague things about rooftop solar. And you gave me a number that blew my mind. So did you prepare anything for the screen or do you want to just give us the number? Oh, I can, I can just talk about it. I, growing okay, let's, let's hear it. What is the um, uh, generational capacity of rooftop solar in California compared sure. to Diablo yeah. Canyon? Sure. So there, there are with um, electric generation two metrics, two ways in which they're measured. One is by the capacity that's installed and the other is how much electricity it actually generates over the course of the year. And those are two different pictures. Um, Let's have both. Let's get them okay. both. Okay. So um, currently um, there's about 13,000 megawatts of, of uh, rooftop solar in California. Um, that's about at least five times uh, the size of Diablo Canyon, which is the largest power plant in California. That's both yeah. reactors. Both reactors put together, yeah, are about 22, 2300 megawatts combined. So let, let's repeat that for a moment. Now, of course, solar doesn't go 100% of the time, but as uh, Donna Gilmore pointed out, um, f roughly on average at Diablo Canyon, one or both of the reactors are shut 40% of the time. So what you're telling us here, Diablo has about what, 2,400 megawatts and, and, and rooftop solar collectively in California has 13,000 megawatts. So it's 13,000 to 2,400, is that right? That is correct. And about and over 1,500 megawatts are being added every year. Oh, you're Astounding. Somebody, uh, somebody, we're hearing somebody. Yeah. So, so we have everybody, you know, this big argument about solar versus nuclear. We have five times as much solar capacity in California as we get from these two nuclear plants. Is that right? Yes, and about every year and a half or so, uh, assuming the CPUC doesn't destroy rooftop solar, which they're threatening to do, um, we're adding another Diablo Canyon worth of capacity. Now, rooftop solar in a year doesn't generate as much electricity, capacity for capacity as Diablo Canyon, but in bulk, the total 13,000 megawatts generate significantly more than Diablo Canyon. So the arguments that the pro-nuclear, pro-Diablo Canyon people have been making uh, is, is that the clean energy in California can't possibly replace Diablo Canyon. But it, in fact, it has since the time that pg and &E put in the application to close the plant in 2016 and today, there is at least as much new solar energy that's been added as all the electricity generated by Diablo Canyon in a good year so what is the, when it's running. So then there's the follow-up question is, what is the annual output of rooftop solar in California of usable megawatt hours compared to the usual output produced by Diablo Canyon? Yeah, on that scale, they're, they're actually measured by units a thousand times larger gigawatt hours. There's so much of it. Okay. So uh, Diablo Canyon um, uh, in, in past years was generating 17 to 18,000 gigawatt hours a year. Um, that would represent close to 90% capacity. Um, but in the uh, past three years, uh, it's been down to around 16,000. So, and, and what does rooftop solar produce? Uh, rooftop solar is growing every year, unlike Diablo Canyon. <laughs> so it, it changed every time you, you turn around, it changes. Um, 
last year it was probably around 21,000 and this year it's probably 22 or 23,000. So you're saying that rooftop solar in California in 2021 produced 21,000 or thereabouts gig usable gigawatt hours of electricity versus 17 or 18,000 usable gigawatt hours of electricity from Diablo Canyon. Closer to 16,000 for Diablo Canyon. They, so, they've, uh, they've been producing less in recent years. It's been producing less in recent years. Diablo has. Yes, it has. Because well, what you said, awesome. that they've been offline, one of the units has been offline quite a bit in the last couple of years. Well, Diablo, like the rest of us, is getting older. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. <that's> so, right. <laughs> so and, and what is the comp comparable cost? Well, yeah. So it, you can't really compare them because for one thing, uh, Diablo Canyon is on the opposite end of a huge and extraordinarily expensive electrical power grid. So by the time it gets to your house, it's far more expensive than it is at the power plant, right? So just asking what does it cost at the power plant isn't a real picture. That's like asking, you know, how much does your transmission cost and using that as a proxy for how much the car costs. Right, it's not a fair comparison. You need the whole car in order to use it. In the same way, you can't use a nuclear plant without a grid, unlike rooftop solar, which you could use without the grid. If you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. All right. Well, listen. So, you know. so, so the real you they they will the pro, pro nuclear people uh, got a uh, an expensive I'm sure expensive report done by people from MIT and Stanford last year who claimed that it was four cents a kilowatt hour. Uh, but that's not what PG&E says when they go to the CPUC and give their sworn testimony. It's probably closer to seven or even nine cents a kilowatt hour, depending on the year and how much they spent that year on the plant. So a couple of years ago, they spent one and a half billion dollars in one year on that plant. And at that point, it's probably closer to nine or nine and a half cents a kilowatt hour. But that's not what we pay for it. We pay as PG&E customers um, over 30 cents a kilowatt hour as residential customers. And that's clearly more expensive than rooftop solar. God, so there you go. This whole debate is going on. Nobody, nowhere have I seen a calculation saying what we get from rooftop solar in terms of usable megawatt or gigawatt hours per year versus Diablo. And clearly rooftop solar produces more, provides more electricity in California than Diablo does. Oh, substantially more. And, and is forecast, again, if the state doesn't uh, shut it down, if it just allows it to grow without oppressive policies, uh, it's forecast by the Energy Commission to produce multiples of this over the next uh, decade or so. Unreal. Unreal. Uh, J Jennifer Tanner, it's great to have you with us. Uh, do you want to ask uh, uh, Robert a question or just chime yeah, in? Yeah, it doesn't say who was talking, so I was wondering who that was. Who was that? It's Ro Robert Freeling, and he still doesn't have his picture up there. Yeah, it just has you. Uh, it <laughs> yeah, just shows you. No, it doesn't even show his name. It just shows you, and so I didn't know who was. That was My great, what, what Robert explained to us. That was really excellent. What I wanted to add to that is, and, and by the way, I know, uh, Harvey, you're going to be working on... Um, how to defeat Diablo, all this information we should put into something and start sending it out all over the place. Well, Robert and I, and others, we're gonna compile an article. It's, it's astounding to me in all the all the months of this big fighting with over Diablo and while they're trying to kill rooftop solar, nobody has pointed out that we get more power from rooftop solar than we do from Diablo. For it's God's brilliant, sake. let's do that. Um, yeah, so what, be, be a part of that with us, please. I, I would absolutely love to. I would absolutely love to. And what I'd like to add to that is there's a bill, AB 2143, that's on the governor's desk. We want him to veto it. It will hurt rooftop solar. It's another kind of a fake, oh, we're going to do um, uh, so, something with uh, um, prevailing rage, wages, but it's just a manipulation by the same person who has already... Um, already uh, tried to kill rooftop solar last year and failed. And that's uh, Wendy Carrillo. So that's one bill. And then this other bill, SB 884, is to give um, PG&E 
And other utilities, $100 billion to do undergrounding. PG&E does 90 miles a year. So 10,000 miles, maybe 140 years. It's going to cost $100 billion. And that money will not be used for renewable energy. It's a terrible bill. Yes, some undergrounding is useful. But the best thing that you can do with... Um, with all of the uh, wildfires and the blackouts is to do what SoCal Edison is doing, and that's triple layer, uh, triple insulate the wires, put in a steel core center, put in arc interrupters that stop the sparking, and SCES, SoCal Edison has done, will have done 4,000 miles this year, and they're not having fires and blackouts in those areas. pg e of course, just wants to cut trees. We successfully killed that bill, but they, they just want to cut trees and not fix the wires. And now they're going to spend billions on undergrounding, and we will not see the results. So um, I'm going to put try to put it in the in the chat. No, uh, obviously uh, the billions should go to uh, roo rooftop solar. At and least stop trying to kill it. But what they should do here's the thing: stop trying to kill rooftop solar. And then the second thing is, solar plus batteries will exponentially be the solution to everything because rooftop solar is the solution. But not when the sun goes down. And if we have batteries, because we, out of the, I think, million five rooftop solars, maybe we have 80,000 batteries, which is nothing. If we, if we can incentivize the batteries, then we can really solve this problem. And in a couple of years. 100%. And I, would, I do want to throw it. That's great, Jennifer. Thank you. I look forward to working with you and Robert and Ron and Tatanka and everybody else on this. I, will, I want to throw in one of <laughs> One other thing, um, I've I've been um, yelling about putting solar panels on the aqueduct and on um, uh, uh, reservoirs, and you they've know they've already started um, that. They've already started doing that. That they've kind already of. started doing it. I've actually seen pictures of of, of, of solar panels on the aqueduct. They, 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 I think they did a mile, or you know, uh, just as two miles. Uh, just as a test. And the thing is, um, Robert and I had this discussion, the electricity, there you go, the electricity, this is an artist's conception though, this is not uh, actual, but th there you go. And the, the, you know, the evaporation, God knows which we need to fight, you know, goes to half or less when you put the solar panels there. And meanwhile, the electricity, you can run the, so you can run the wire down the aqueduct uh, to a, you know to a, a switching station. You don't have to do any right away. But um, Robert pointed out there's a lot of electrical consumption that goes on in the aqueduct, and uh, the, the the solar panels on the aqueduct can power the aqueduct because actually it's a significant power user because of the pumping. Um, fantastic, Jennifer. Is there more you want to say? Put yeah, your I just wanted to add so kind of an interesting. Uh, strange bedfellows on this SB884. I had started, you know, trying to oppose it when it was 20 to 30 billion, and then they gave us some kind of okay amendments. I sort of went neutral, and then at the very last minute, um, before it passed the Senate or the Assembly, they added, "Oh, we're going to not just do undergrounding for PG&E, but we're going to allow SoCal Edison and San Diego to make a lot of money on undergrounding too because it boosts their stock and blah blah blah." So, um, pub. Um, turn who you know supposedly their job is to keep the rates low and this will explode people already cannot afford their energy so turn got involved and i saw that turn was involved with wanting to kill this bill and i thought yeah i i didn't know if i could work with turn because they you know are against rooftop solar but i reached out to mark tony and said i could help you get some groups to oppose this bill and um, I got him 31 groups and he was so thrilled. And we had a long conversation. And I said, you know, it's kind of hard for me because I look like um, uh, I'm sleeping with the enemy here and people are upset that I'm working with Turn because you want to kill rooftop solar. So what are you going to do about that? And haven't taken him all the way where we need him to go, but he's just taken, he's going to be in the next day or two, take off the whole bias cost shift thing off his website. Wow, fantastic. We Thank need you. to have a dedicated Zoom on this too. Tatanka, let's put together, and, and Rana and Wendy uh, and Jennifer, a, a California um, uh, a discussion of this. 
And, and Robert, thank you for that. Abs absolutely. Jennifer has been so instrumental with Indivisible and with Stephanie and Mimi and our other people. It's great working with her. We can do that. Thanks. Fantastic. Fantastic. Amila and then Danette and then Ron and then Paul. And I, I, Steve, we're clearly going to go over on this. If you can stay with us, that would be great. Did you uh, cut the uh, recording in, in, uh, earlier and start a new one? Is that what happened? And you, you're giving me sign language. <laughs> what are you trying to tell me? Uh, I, in, I interpret that sign language as yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> we are, we're still recording, though. But um, it's separate from the previous one. Did you yeah, break it? Well, that's, that's Mike. This is me. So Okay. So I can say what the fuck and we're okay here. Okay. No, no, you're still recording, man. Don't. Yeah, but, you know, we're not, <laughs> well, we're not on the radio. Well, put it on the air, you know? <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, 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 Myla okay. And yeah. Thank you, Harvey. So thank will, you, we will, Robert. We wait. It's seven minutes till the top of the hour, but we're going to go past because this, oh. is, this is not just California-centric, but clearly California is leading the way here. Uh, go ahead, uh, Myla and then Danette. Robert, thank you so much for crunching all the numbers. Uh, you know, for those of us who followed the uh, the passage in the dead of the night at the very last hour of the California State Legislature, the, the extension of the um, operations at California's decrepit Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant, we kept hearing the excuse that in 2024 and 2025, when Diablo is was scheduled to be um, to to be uh, uh, shut down, that we just might experience a few hours of a few days um, not being able to meet our energy needs. And so, my question for you, Robert, is: Have you crunched the numbers to see? what the actual capacity, not for installed rooftop, but the potential for rooftop solar in the state of California. And also, uh, well, let's just stick with that. If, if people, if rooftop solar were not hobbled by the CPUC and various government agencies, but were actually, people were incentivized to put rooftop solar on their homes, how much energy could be generated by 2024 and 2025? Could we make up that difference? Oh, so Robert, there, that was you. Yeah, can, can you hear me now or? Yes, we yes. can. Okay, good. Um, so the, the, there are two different questions really here. And that's why I was saying there are two different metrics. One is megawatts, which is relevant to whether there's a power outage for an hour or two. And the other is the amount of energy or electricity something produces over a year, whether it's a nuclear plant, rooftop solar, gas plant, whatever. Those are two totally different measures. And we've already replaced the electrical energy generation over and over again with different clean energy re resources, not just rooftop solar, but also energy efficiency. Also the renewable energy purchased by utilities and community choice programs throughout the state. Um, and, and the amount of electricity far exceeds by a factor more than 10 uh, that Diablo Canyon produces. So that's not really a, uh, a problem per se. Um, and the clean energy policies already require uh, replacement of Diablo Canyon's electrical generation. Um, and, and the CPUC has already ordered that. So that's not the problem. The, the capacity in a moment, like for an hour or two, when the, when the, grain, the uh, grid is under strain, um, if I can talk straight, um, that is best uh, fulfilled either by what's called demand response, where people temporarily curtail, reduce their demand. Um, the grid operator said it would take years and years to do this, but, um, and they already have some, uh, but a couple of weeks ago on, on one of the worst days of, of the heat storm, uh, the governor's office figured out that they could 
text people, if you can imagine, they discovered this. Um, millions of people could be sent a text message that the grid will be under strain for the next couple hours. And within five minutes, people responded and reduced demand by 1200 megawatts. So like half the capacity of Diablo Canyon was reduced in five minutes just by a simple text message and people agreeing to help. So that's what's possible to do. That's my uh, But it took the governor's office of emergency services because apparently the utilities and the grid operator don't have this capacity to just send a simple text message. Kaiso, the grid operator only had I think 20,000 people uh, on its Twitter account for, for a flex alert out of the 30 million people that live in the area it controls the electricity for. So they're not really, they don't care. That's what's needed. And then uh, on a larger scale to fi what's what fixes the problem is you have a decline in solar output in the late afternoon, early evening, and the demand is still high. And, and the battery storage is what fills that little gap for an hour or two in the evening, maybe three hours. And in the past couple of years, another untold story is that utility scale storage, they've added over 3000 megawatts of. So you talk about replacing Diablo Canyon, they already did that more than that. In addition to which there's nearly a thousand megawatts behind the meter that customers have added in California. So they're actually over 4,000 megawatts now, nearly two Diablo Canyons were. So the question is whether they use these efficiently. Uh, they could be, they could take Diablo Canyon off easily by 2025. Just continue down the direction we're going. We don't really need to subsidize rooftop solar that much. Um, certainly maybe for people who, um, uh, if, if they cut, if they, if they start taxing the solar energy, then you will need, then you'll create the need to subsidize it. Right, that's the, that's the problem. But as long as they don't do that, uh, we don't really need to subsidize solar, it justifies itself. Uh, the battery storage is another thing. That's something that, ne that, that definitely needs more, uh, more subsidies. Well, I, I think in our discussions, we ascertained maybe Ron knows or Tatanka or Jennifer, there's something like eight or 900 megawatts now of yes. individually owned as opposed yeah. to individual. If yeah. If we own batteries in people's houses, you, we have about 800 megawatts. Yeah, probably by close to a thousand by the early next year. Amazing, amazing. I want to point out by the way, where Paul Newman, who has the uh, meltdown of TMI behind him, has uh, rooftop solar on on his home. How's it working out, Paul? It's it's working out pretty good, although um, the LA Solar has a connection to my panel so they can tell if they're offline and they somehow went offline unbeknownst to me and for about two months, two summer months and I didn't know about it and I just discovered it after looking oh, my. at my bill, you Wait. know, so that's getting fixed. Do you have a up. battery? Do you have a battery in your basement? Oh, no, but I, I, that's my next choice is to get a battery because. And, and, and a car charger. I, I don't need a car charger. I just, I have a plug-in, but a little Prius plug-in, but uh, cool. uh, other than that, it, I love it. You know, I mean, I was able last year in 21, was able to run my air conditioning and then have a annual bill of 300 bucks. Cool. That's awesome. Annual, divide that by 12, you know. Fantastic. So it was really, really good. So All right. it, it was kind of disappointing when they went offline and, not, and didn't tell me, so. I guess we got to check on our own. Okay, good. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Uh, Danette okay. and then Ron. Yeah, just wondering if we're going in stack still. Um, I had a question for Robert. Um, when is uh, when are we going to catch up uh, with the uh, batteries that we can have at home, so they can store whatever energy we need without selling it back to the utilities? When will we be there? Yeah, well, that's that's available now, and from what I'm reading, um, Tesla is more or less making that the mandatory product that people have to buy. But when is it so, going to be affordable? Like it, like we're trying to oh, affordable is yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we what's need affordability. Cost, what's cost for a, oh, sorry, go ahead. Danette. So yeah, yeah, we need, the, go ahead. yeah, we need affordability beyond anything. Um, that's why we're trying to defeat the 
rooftop solar tax because it's going to make so a rooftop solar unaffordable for a great swath of people in California. So hand in hand goes the storage. Um, so we don't have to sell that back. Yeah. So that, that there, there are multiple moving parts in the answer to that question. Um, one part is uh, that we pay more for solar energy in uh, for rooftop solar in this uh, country than, than most other countries around the world. Um, uh, for example, in Germany or Australia, uh, which have, you know, costs of living similar to ours, uh, the, the cost to, to, to install rooftop solar is, is uh, about a third of what we pay. Wow. Um, Amazing. So, and, unless you get a really good price, then maybe it's half of what we pay. <laughs> so, well, if I, if I have rooftop solar on my house, in a, in a normal house, you know, or an average house, whatever, um, what would it cost me to put a battery in my basement? So the, the most affordable uh, battery that store, you know, that backs up a house size would be the Tesla battery right now. And, and their uh, sort of list price is 12000 And if you pair it with a, and that's installed with all the hardware and so forth, uh, if you... Um, Pair it with the solar, they claim they give you a $1,500 discount. So $10,500. And then the state has a subsidy program uh, under the CPUC, uh, but um, they don't have the general market program fund. They ran out of money. So only if you're low income at the moment can you get a subsidy. Um, and they have hundreds of millions of dollars there. That would be a great thing, except the CPUC drags its heels on low-income programs. So they, they take years to hand out the money. Um, but they, they need to replenish the, uh, the general market so that people of middle income can afford to, to buy these things. Well, they got a billion and a half dollars to keep Diablo going. Why don't they just put it in the batteries, for God's sake? Yeah, I ran the numbers on that. You asked me about that. And, and you could certainly give a, a generous subsidy, uh, you know, a few thousand dollars each, 30, 3,500. There's also a new tax credit that of the, with the Inflation Reduction, Reduction Act, uh, 30%. So uh, between uh, Tesla's discount, the, um, the federal tax subsidy, and say a $3,000, $3,500 thing, you could get it at half price today. If, if they took that money that they're giving to, to PG&E for Diablo Canyon and subsidized people's uh, home battery. Amazing. Uh, Ron Leonard? Ron? Uh, On mute. Good. <laughs> so the, Harvey, as you know, uh, numbers count and facts really do matter in this situation and uh, it's beneficial I think for utilities and other special interests to try to confuse things so people don't really uh, make logical choices to uh, um, serve their own best interests. So what happened last week as we mentioned uh, there are 1.5 million solar roofs and we're talking household roofs in California. Well, there are of those, 30,000 of them have batteries in their basement. And all. yeah, but uh, that is changing. That adoption rate has gone through the roof in terms of people who used to buy a solar system, maybe 10% of them were buying a battery also. Well, that's gone way up. Some, some of that uh, adoption rate I'm hearing is upwards of 60% now. And I wonder why in California that might be that high. Well, it could be the outages. I, I would think that would be a concern for people. So when that occurred, those problems occurred last week, those 30,000 battery systems were able to discharge a half a gigawatt of power to the grid. That saved the grid twice last, last week. Twice the entire grid was saved by people's roofs. And, and that's an untold story. People are putting money out of their own pocketbook, installing something on their roof that protects them, but they're willing to take some of that power and give it back to the grid. Well, in the case of Tesla, when they do that, they get 65 bucks every time they do it. So it's not that it's a, a giveaway, 
Yeah. It's a gift that keeps on giving. Somebody in the background somewhere? Yeah. Somebody needs some view. Okay, go ahead, Ron. So uh, that scenario then goes into the next phase. When you say, you know, how many solar roofs can we really get? Well, Australia has 3 million of them. And they did it real quick. And we could do it easily as quick as Australia did that. And then you go and add the fun factor, which is electric vehicles. Now, we know that Tesla sold a million electric vehicles this year, uh, last year. This year, they're going to be selling 2 million solar vehicles. And then you add the Ford F-150s and all the other electric vehicles. Well, they become an entire grid battery system available for emergencies or available to sell back to the grid or available as a source. So if you uh, looked at that in California, uh, the uh, NRDC is saying that the state could have 14 million EVs by 2035. And that would basically be able, if you took those batteries and connected them all together, which is easily done, enough to power the entire state for three days. Think about, that. Think about that. There is no problem. There is multiple solutions. We can fix this. This is not a mystery. This is not throw your hands up in the air and say, oh, we have to have more nuclear power plants. This is a functionally smart thing to do. It's cost effective. It's easy to do. And what? It benefits the ratepayer, not the big utility. And that's who we need to concentrate on because we found out again last week, there are 20 million Americans that can't afford to pay their electricity bill. And of that 20 million, 3 million of them are likely to have their electricity cut off because the price for electric is going through the roof. That's unfathomable. And their, their solution, their out, is that they could put in a solar system on their house and that solar system will start to pay back on day one. In other words, the production of that solar on that roof will be costing less money than the money you borrow from the bank. So you actually get a payback on day one. Well, and I want to point out that the last time <laughs> that we had car batteries having a major impact on the electrical system was when Fukushima was blowing up and the operators of the comp of Fukushima had to run into the parking lot and take batteries out of their cars and bring them into the control room so that they would, would still be able to get power <laughs> at the Fukushima nuclear plant. That's, that's cars, car batteries in, in operation. Uh, Paul Sherman, Justin, Tatanka, Jennifer, Peter, and Eric. Paul, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Uh, uh, again, great uh, information, Robert. Just uh, something, question has been always uh, in the, you know, in, in my mind as long as, you know, I've, I've worked with and experimented with solar voltaics. What, what's now about the lifetime of the panels and about reusing, recycling, you know, when, when they've reached, you know, they don't last forever, you know, how, what, what's the cost of replacement or maintenance and then when they when a, a solar voltaic panel does uh, wear out or burn out, you know, I, I guess it, does the environment if they're in a hot area or or depending on you know sun exposure, whatever temperature, what when they do uh, wear out or or burn out, it, you know, what sort of recycling or you know are are there uh, environmental issues to basically solar panels being put in the landfills, it, you know, God hope not. You know, is, is there much um, information that you've looked at or history? Maybe it's too soon to tell. We're getting that a lot. It's a very good question. I think I Ron can, knows I can give you the fun fact from personal experience. <laughs> I've been in this industry 45 years. So I've seen solar panels that were in the Saudi Arabian desert for 25 years. They work just fine after 25 years. Guess what? That was 20 years ago. So this is not a problem because what is happening to repowering is what it's called. When you got a solar power system 25 years ago, it was 10% efficient. 
and you can get one now that's 20% efficient. And uh, people take the old ones off the roof and put on the new ones. Those old ones work great. They are probably being used by somebody else, maybe in a third world country, to uh, power what is needed to be powered. The worst case is you have to recycle those solar panels. So they have glass, they have silicon, and they have aluminum. All of those are easily recycled and there are recycling companies now willing and able to do that. There is one exception, which is a company called uh, Spurs Solar, and yeah. they actually mandate that they recycle their own solar panels. Just to, pig so just to piggyback on, on Ron, um, pardon me, Sluggo, just no, to no, piggyback on Ron, I mean, for over 20 years, the warrant, remember when you get a warranty on a, on a refrigerator or something, they usually give you a year. They know it's going to last longer than that. The warranty on solar panels for decades has been, the standard has been 20 years. They know they're going to last, like Ron said, you know, 40 years, 50 years from now, if, if you take care of them. And the other thing is there are some European countries that have pretty, ma pretty much mastered the recyclable thing, like they've done with autos and, and other uh, home appliances. It's kind of part of the life cycle. And if you build in the recycling possibilities to reuse that material, it becomes very economically efficient. Yeah. So I, well, to, can, I, can I contribute something here? Uh, go ahead. Oh, wait. And let me throw in real quick and then, Paul. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the $64 trillion question will be, can we replace lithium? Will there be a substitute for lithium? Yes, solar? there is. There is. And, and it has to do with ceramic, and it's not that far off. And there's a speaker that can come explain it to us in probably two or three weeks. Well, let's get that speaker. Go ahead, Paul. Paul Shermery, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay. Um, um, I, I thought you wanted to jump in. Um, um, I, was, I was next, but I cut in oh. for that. Can I speak now? Please, yes. Go okay. ahead. So all I was going to say was... <laughs> I think we need something like a, a real simple site, which could also translate into a comic book, which could translate into a real class movie. Just <laughs> follow the money website to explain both sides of this, to explain the old death economy, the uh, how the big money comes in, for instance, puts pressure on the governor's office that calls up and puts pressure on the appropriate person in Biden's office to change the wording so that when the money comes for the nuclear that nobody knows is gonna happen, when it hits California, the language has been changed. The language has always been, you have to compare this to available other sources. That would be solar and wind. That money is gone. They don't have to compare it with anything because they know it's so much more expensive. So what you've got is a situation where the market economy as long as it isn't monopoly capital market economy, the market economy is already working very fine, thank you. The industry is growing as everything that Robert has been saying, you know, during this whole discussion. The answers are there. They want to stop. They will refuse to even let this level of capitalism exist so that it's possible. So we have a follow the money little thing. It's really easy to follow. Then people can figure it out, including all the questions that you've been asking for. So we need that. And then um, I will have a speaker come to explain about the, the battery thing. And then uh, when, was it Josiah? What was his name? The solar guy? Ron, Ron Leonard. No, no, no. The, yeah. the, I'm sorry, the garden guy, community garden. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, something... So when, 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 he comes, when he comes back, I want to have a little conversation because I was part of a community up in the, up in the, the between 69 and 78, where we had some of us were living in East Palo Alto. We were the activists. Then we had the hippies up in the land. <laughs> we were back and forth. Like they would come down to our, our picket lines. We would go up in the, in the summer and, you know, uh, sunbathe naked and, and uh, have the, the long house band and, and all the fish farms and the domes and the tree houses and all that stuff. So it was a 3,000 acre place. And at that time, they went to the Swiss to find out how they recycled their human waste. And they had a very functional, for a, 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 a 
ongoing community of 70 people up on the land, up in Skyline, that was functioning fine with this method until the developers came in through the city of Palo Alto and they basically ordered them to you know, have an expensive pipe come down, dump it in the bay, <laughs> and then go through you know, our old system. Rather than that was functioning very well, thank you. The Swiss have been doing it for a long time. So that story, the Swiss have, you know, have, have generated a lot of great solutions. There are several European right. nations that have. Well, I, I look uh, forward to work, working with the Swiss, so maybe I can get some tennis lessons from Roger Federer. Um, uh, uh, Justin, Peter, and Jennifer, and Eric. Huh. Oh, one, once. Go quick, ahead, Ron. Yeah, Ron, go ahead. The uh, quick fact is, if you've ever listened to this crazy book called Freakonomics, they sort of dive down into uh, what's in it for me. And what's in it for me for the utilities is they're guaranteed to make a 10% profit for all those underground lines that they buried and all that uh, upgrade to the nuclear power plants. And uh, that is a significant bottom line issue, which basically guides all their thinking. What's yeah. it doing for my stockholder? I think we should call ourselves the Milton Friedman Solar Alliance here to uh, evoke <laughs> the, the market. Uh, Justin, then Peter, then Jennifer, then Eric. Yeah, so uh, I'm putting in the chat that there was a uh, study done that First thing everybody needs to know is no matter the power source, you're going to have waste. There's not always a match between where stuff is used and when stuff is used and when it's generated. And so all the technologies have this problem. Doesn't matter what technology you come up with, there's no perfect match. So it really doesn't matter if we overbuild solar, if we overbuild wind. In fact, it actually works when you pair it with storage as additional stability. It, it, uh, that little bit of storage provides all the flexibility that you really need in order to keep the system stable. And so the International Solar Engineering or uh, Solar Energy Society, uh, I put the link in the chat, they did a study on that using the largest grid system in America and demonstrated that yes, indeed, renewables are cheaper than any other source by far. And so really it's just a matter of rolling these things out. So the suggestion that I was, uh, you know, we can talk it amongst ourselves or, or, or advocate for these things is solar, there's still plenty of room to overbuild it. So why not just pay people's purchase price, their monthly costs back to them, reimburse them. And then for storage, do it two times as much because the grid really, 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 really needs it. Right. And then we don't have to spend all that money on Diablo. That's yep. now in the chat. And the guy who came up with that is Mark Perez. And his father says to him, Mark, uh, are you sure about this number? He did his doctoral thesis on it. He checks the numbers and damn it, Mark was right. You can power the entire grid with 100% renewable energy. Take a look at the Zoom chat on YouTube. Well, we need to produce the definitive document here and get it into the mainstream media. That's what we got to do. Peter Deutsch and then Jennifer Tanner. Peter, thank you for that, Justin. Are you unmuted? I think I am now. I'm Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, basically, <clears throat> I guess I don't know that the uh, lift that the storage batteries are going to work. We're at the beginning of getting our house with the solar roof. We're going to do it. We have a small house, so I don't know how uh, we can do with the batteries. I don't think we really need them right away, but I just wonder if I should be a little cautious. I live in uh, the Alabama part of Pennsylvania, you know, the old saying. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, right. I'm next to Pittsburgh, but I'm 30 miles away, so right. I don't know how well it's going to be implemented. Oh, the uh, batteries are a piece of cake. I mean, uh, Ron and, and Tataka, the, the batteries, not a big deal, you know. It, it's, they it all. Aren't they big? Aren't they big? No, 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 no. They're very, very slim. They look really nice. About what, five, six feet by three, four feet, and then um, maybe by what? Three, three four five, inches. five inches thick. Inches. So Five. the third dimension is in inches. It's units yeah. of inches. Half a foot. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. You uh, can consult with Ron. He'll tell you what to get. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's definitely not rocket science. And you should consider when you... But it might be to the people who would help me here. So that's what I'm a little worried well, about, too. I'm, you, you I'm an Eastern help. snob. But go ahead. Well, but, but when you're putting the package together, you should also consider putting in a car charger. Because you might as well get the tax credit while you're doing the whole thing and then get a plug-in hybrid and uh, and you're good, you won't have to go to the gas station anymore. Well, I don't think we're in those income ranges. For example, I donated today with some of my minimum required distribution. I'm retired. So there are limits on what I can do, but I'm trying to see what I can do. Well, the bottom line is I told my nephew, my, my son-in-law who owns a commercial building in Hackensack, the bottom line is, are your payments on your solar battery and car charger system going to be less than your electric bill would otherwise be? That's that's the that's the whole motivating factor. So that you, that yeah, that depends on the policies. Uh, that depends on the policies in place. So there's there's a big effort, as you know, to undermine net metering so people will not get full retail value for their energy. Right, and if you, utilities are successful at that, then um, then it will damage the ability of people to get their money back. Right, and that's why it's so important uh, to to look at the policy side of this. It is, but and on, but on the other hand, we now have a, a guaranteed thirty percent tax credit, which is a big deal. It is a very big deal. Stuff out there. That's very federal. Is that a, that part of Biden's yeah, legislation? Yeah, IRA. And you know, of all places. New Jersey is really progressive in terms of subsidies for. Well, I'm not in New Jersey. Well, but you're close. Uh, you know, well, I'm 300 miles away. I'm 500, 500 kilometers. So, you know, you can 500 kilometers. Like he does. <laughs> Jennifer. Sorry, sorry. Peter, did you have more? Okay, Jennifer. Jennifer. Well, I, I, I was saying something, but I guess maybe. No, I go ahead. Come finish. back. I can come back next week. Well, I might be better educated. Jennifer, Jennifer, well, I'm, jump in. I don't. I don't necessarily know enough to really even appreciate the answers to the questions. I do have a PhD in physics, but this is still new for me. Uh, I'm 500 not, kilometers. I'm 500 kilometers talking. away from. I'm 500 kilometers away from from New Jersey, uh, and we don't really. Can we put this in a container outside of the house? We don't have a basement. We're not going to uh, this stuff is not rocket science. It's very, it's it's pretty simple. And Ron, Ron can tell you, Tatanka, if, you know, once I had a, a shocker, I have a home in, we, we haven't figured out our finances yet, uh, but I had the guys out. <clears throat> I have a house in the, in the valley in LA. And for some reason, it's a Cape Cod house, which is great for me. I'm from Massachusetts. Okay. But for some reason, I have roofs that are so steep that it's almost not doable to put solar panels. I, I think whoever built my house must have had a kit and they thought there was snow in LA that you had to have a steep roof. Oh so my. what can I tell you? Uh, but you, it, Peter, if you have a PhD yeah. in physics, if you can read and add, you can do solar. I mean, it's not, not complicated. It's really not. So a lot uh, of people put the battery on the garage wall. Simple hang on the wall. You can put oh them my. outside, I thought. That's what I'm asking. Although we're the, not the in LA, only problem with outside, we don't have super heat waves either. Right. So the only maybe problem will work. Yeah, but the only problem with outside is under very cold conditions, you do not want to charge the battery. So they put the battery in some sort of enclosure with some sort of insulation and with a little bit of electric heater to maintain the minimum temperature. And I guarantee you, as they become more popular, people who put them outside are going to have them stolen. So you may want to, you may want to keep right. You know, Thanks. okay, Jennifer, we finally get you. Jennifer, are you still with us? Yeah, <laughs> yes, I am. Sorry about so, that. So um, I, I, this is just back to uh, uh, a long time ago when we were talking about Diablo, that uh, Turn is uh, vehemently against Diablo. So they will be an ally with us on that. Turn, finally. They weren't so great a long ago. Well, they weren't great about a lot of things, but I think they're, they're, they're right on this one. So um, just wanted to share that. So maybe when we figure out our strategy, I can, I can bring it to them. And because he's looking for a strategy 
to, to, to push against it so all of us can come up with something creative? Well, when, when there was that, that one hearing that they did where you know many, many people testified, the guy from Turn really dissected the bill and showed all the other you know, thievery that's involved in, in, in 846. Is that what it is? 884. 884. No, but the one that uh, he put through the legislature. Yeah, 846. 846, 846 is the Diablo Canyon. And the guy yeah. from Turn really dismantled the thing. There's a lot more other theft and, and handouts, PG&E, in that building people understood. And it was the guy from Turn who really, really pu pulled it apart. Like yeah, I said, just, he's really uh, upset. Yeah. He, he's, he's, he's really upset about it. The, the biggest subsidy will be from the rate payers by far. And we already pay a huge subsidy as, as customers of PG&E and as well as the CCA customers, even though they don't use mostly the electricity from Diablo Canyon, still have to pay the stranded costs. And those stranded costs have been estimated by PG&E to run anywhere from half a billion to over a billion dollars a year. So that goes way beyond any uh, any uh, imagined public subsidy out of, out of the out of the tax base. Yeah, and it's a complete scam. And in turn, was really good at t tearing it. I mean, it's such a ripoff. You always, you know, the, the nuclear issue is always there's always more than meets the eye. They always use, in addition to the nuclear weapons dimension about nuclear power, they yeah. always use nuclear stuff to throw in other scams. Because people are so focused on the nuclear issue that they don't look beneath. And it's like the Wizard of Oz, you know, you pull the curtain aside and there's more crap than you can ever believe. I mean, it's amazing what a scam 846 is. Yeah. Um, not, only, not only that, but they're, they're eliminating NEPA. So there's not even oversight in anything bad that happens like, hey, a nuclear explosion because it's on a fault. They won't even be responsible for anything and they're going to fast track. It, it's, it's just, it's just crazy. CEQA, CEQA also, th this will kill the California um, uh, environmental bills because they're giving them uh, an exemption. And so the next people down the line are going to come to the court and they're going to say, hey, they exempted Diablo. You have to exempt yeah. us too. That's well, 884, the undergrounding bill of McGuire, they started off exempting CEQA. And luckily, a number of good assembly people said, deal breaker, I'm not going to pass this bill that way. And then they let go of it. But good, good, good. All right. Uh, Eric Lazarus is in New York. But two, two quick questions. Yeah. Can you hear me, Eric, here? Um, yeah. Okay. Question one, someone was talking about the use of batteries in people's cars and in people's homes um, to um, then give back to the grid uh, in such a way that it could really stabilize the grid. Does that require, quote unquote, a smart grid upgrade to the grid? If so, what is that? How big a deal is it? Question one. Question two, I came across two um, seemingly very sophisticated material scientists who claim to have solved what they claim is a super important problem, the recycling of wind turbine blades. Anyone who's willing to interview these people and try to figure out whether what they have is really important, I might have access to capital to help them move their enterprise forward if I knew that what they're doing really is important and they really do have an important breakthrough. I'm Eric. Okay. I'd be happy to help you out in both instances. What I mentioned to you was that uh, in the case of California, uh, they uh, predict that in 2035, there would be uh, 14 million electric vehicles that if you could suck all the juice out of them instantaneously in a grid problem time, it would be able to power the entire grid in California. For three days now does that require grid upgrades well certainly if you're a utility they're going to say that but factually in the case of a grid that we know about which is the grid in hawaii they are now accepting 110 percent of the power from that grid at some times from solar energy so the big scam is that oh we can't do this it's too hard uh we can't manage the grid if there's that much solar and wind on it oh it's baloney or use the technical term BS, because uh, factually we have proven that we know how to do this, we are doing this now, 
and we can do this in the future. There is one caveat uh, I do want to mention uh, on this number that we're talking about. Presently, uh, people like Ford F-150, they have two-way flows of power out of their battery system. Tesla is really not set up at the present. They could enable it conceivably with software to allow the, the car to power backwards into the house. And the grid is not a problem uh, from the point of view of regulating that power because it all goes through an inverter, a synchronous inverter, changing from DC to AC, and it is in sync with the power line, and it's really not a problem to deal with. Wow, amazing. Um, Tatanka, did you want to add into this? And then yeah. Mary? I yeah, think I we're about at the, the limit here, okay. uh, but, but this has been a fantastic discussion. We have to have a, a another uh, hour long uh, hit on this in a week or two. Uh, Mary, go ahead. Oh, no, that, that was it Tatanka and then Mary. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. Tatanka. Just um, um, for Peter, to something to look forward to. The goal of Romero Institute and Dolores Huerta Foundation have a series of bills between now and 2024 to demonstrate that we can get to carbon zero by 2030, also taking, also uh, addressing the short-term pollutants, you know, the, the methane and the black carbon and all the really, really dangerous stuff which has to be done. Now, what, what just passed, Senate Bill 1230, will enable and uh, will enable someone to buy a new Z, EV, a new zero electric vehicle with the incentives on, on a website, real simple. There's a number of them. Right now it's so complicated, nobody can really follow it. And some of it only come back to you when you, uh, as, a, as a deduction. And for people who really need a car and the EJ community and, and a lot of people now, they run the car, the car runs out, you get another car. They can't wait and they don't have any tax deductions to give. So everything gets front loaded. A very simple computer that your auto sales person, if you get a, a Chevy Volt really inexpensive or something, the auto person will have it there. They dial it up. And for somebody who is really in a position of need, it's between 11 and Oh man! Texas. Oh no! <laughs> and then you're financing maybe ten thousand dollars, and you can get like zero money down and zero payment for three years or five years. They still have to figure out what to do after that. But that's what's coming. It's so accessible now. The other thing, just to let you know, is that because of what happened in the legislature, and because CARB isn't has never addressed the environmental justice community. And they're still talking about a carbon neutrality, which allows a lot of injustice and a lot of things to go on. Romero is writing the bill that will that will handle how the heck we're going to get the money for the infrastructure in the in the working class and poor areas. Because if you don't have the infrastructure, you can't get the charging stations, whether it's on a church or a school or a gas station. If you don't even have a proper uh, internet infrastructure, for instance. It's, it's non-functional. So th that's ongoing work for year 23, 24. But all this will be handled, we believe, and including regenerative agriculture, public banking, et cetera, in the next two years of the legislative session so that by 2030, there's an example. And so whatever progressive candidate is running for president can upgrade the Biden plan, which is essentially the Davos plan, which you know all big energy and the reset people are for. That is, we will get around to it by 2050, by which time we don't have that time. We don't have that time. We don't have time even for 2030. We're still going to face enormous consequences, but the example will be there. So, Peter in Pennsylvania, the the, the key people to guide your progress to solarizing and batteries and an electric car or a hybrid car, a plug-in hybrid, is your accountant. Mm -hmm. What you want to do is you want to find out how much you're paying in electricity and how much you're paying for gas and then back the system up uh, until you reach that number on a monthly basis. And you finance it to so that you don't, it doesn't cost you anything. And, and, you know, the tax credits and all the other stuff fit in there. So you get your electric bill, you figure out how much you're paying for gas, and then you, you shop based on monthly payments that come out to less than that. 
But well, if anybody I... putting in a solar system now should absolutely put in a battery. I mean, there's just and and that, why not a car charger? We're gonna have to pull the plug. Here can I can, I can I say oh, something on that? Okay, wait, wait. We're gonna about, about to lose our our network here. Oh dear. Okay. Oh, well. Um, um, sorry, um, Steve. How much you got here? How, you got to go. Well, yeah. I mean, okay. Seven o'clock would have been it, maybe. But now we're over a half hour. Ah. Uh, okay. So listen. Um, uh, can we continue this next week? Uh, 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 Jennifer, can you come back? And Robert. And yeah. um, all our regulars, uh, Peter, if you want more advice, I, I, I suggest you do some research.